Prices hit a national average of $5 a gallon over the weekend. And here's the problem. It's not over. Analysts say the costs could continue to climb. The peak is nowhere in sight. American households are spending about $160 more per month on fuel than they were a year ago. That comes on the heels of Friday's consumer price index, showing inflation rose to 8.6 percent. We're talking yeah. about a four-decade high. Yeah, mom and dad, wake up the kids. He's here. <laughs> We He's need him. He's got charts. He's pissed off. Former Treasury I'm not official sure he is. and Morning Joe economic He's analyst Steve Renner. No, he's not. But Steve, I look at these numbers, and I mean, I'm sure I was like you, hoping uh, against hope that the inflation would start to go down and ease a little bit. But man, I between the war, between China, China. slowly starting to open open up again. I mean, it only seems like demand's going to just keep going higher, right? Joe, we were all hoping the numbers were going to be better, but they weren't. They were really disappointing because it's not just gasoline, although obviously gasoline is of critical importance to Americans and a kind of sticker price you see every time you drive down a street. But it's unbelievably broad-based inflation, and as you say, it is not getting better. And what you can see in the Friday numbers that came out is how widespread it was. You see the red being energy, 28 percent of the inflation, but shelter, housing, is 21 percent and food was 17 percent. So two-thirds of the inflation came from things that Americans have to have, necessities of life. And on the right, I put some just random categories just to show you what some of the individual price increases have been over the, just over the past year. Gas up 50 percent, airfare up almost 40 percent, eggs up over 30 percent. Things like wow. window coverings. Who thinks about window coverings? Up so, 20%. so, so, tell me, tell me, uh, Steve, why are eggs? Explain to, to our viewers why eggs would be going up that much. Why window coverings would be going up that much? Well, certainly it's not like people are buying huge amounts more eggs. So it comes more probably on the supply side in this case. In the case of eggs, you do have this issue of avian flu going through the bird population that may have had some impact. But a lot of it is just classic supply chain problems. That, they, that, that manufacturers, agricultural growers, whatever, can't get enough of the supplies they need, so they supply less. Consumers continue to demand just as much, and prices just go up. And tires up 16%, coffee up 16%. So we're seeing really large, large increases uh, really across the board on all kinds of things. And that's yeah, how, uh, you know, sorry. No, no, I was just gonna say, I mean, you look at these numbers, it all, all seems, uh, it seems like it ba it's bad. It's all going to keep going uh, up. And uh, my God, over the last year, we have seen wages uh, skyrocket. Uh, and we've talked about it a good bit. Um, and yet, your next chart shows that no matter how much more money people are making, they're not feeling it at the end of the day because the price uh, inflation is outpacing whatever gains they may be making uh, in their salaries. They're feeling worse at the end of the day, Joe, as you just indicated. We had during, in the, in, in the uh, occasion of the unemployment report a week earlier, we got some wage data, which was good. Wages continue to grow, as you say, in a nice four or five percent range. But when you have 8.6 percent inflation, obviously you then lose something like four percent of your purchasing power. And that's the little red line in the red circle you can see on the chart at the left. So we went from a period, a long period, where wages were exceeding inflation, that's that turquoise line, and then you can see they've gone off a cliff. So then on the right, last Friday, we also got the consumer sentiment report, the monthly consumer sentiment report. That's the red line you see circled there, hit its lowest level ever since the index was first compiled in 1978. So you've got a bunch of, a lot of very unhappy Americans out there. We still have an incredibly low unemployment rate, about three and a half percent. But 55 percent of Americans think we're in a recession at the moment. That's how bad they feel yeah. because of what's happening with inflation and their wages and gas prices and all of that. Yeah. So, Steve, I, I, I read uh, one op-ed after another about how this is Joe Biden's inflation. This is Joe Biden's fault. It makes me tired. It would make me much more tired if I didn't know that Democrats would do the same thing to a Republican president. Everybody's going to blame whoever's in there. And but it seems to me that uh, so much of this is outside the hands of a president, uh, which leads to the next question. It seems to me the Fed chair and the Fed have the real power 
How much should, should they jack up interest rates? If you have inflation at eight and a half percent and it could go even higher, at what point does the Fed step in and start getting really aggressive? Well, the Fed is going to have a meeting this week and they're going to make an announcement on Wednesday. The market expects another half a percentage point in, uh, in interest rates to go up. But it's probably is that got to enough? go up. Excuse me? Is that it's enough? Not even is close. that enough? No, it's not enough. It's not enough. You're going to have to have interest rates go up substantially more, maybe four or five, six percent, who knows, in order to really deal with the inflation. But interest rates, raising interest rates has consequences, as you can see on this chart that's up now. You can see how sharply interest rates have gone up since the beginning of this year, really. I show you the 10 year Treasury, but I also show you mortgage rates, which Barnacle and I were just talking about, which are up two full percentage points to over 5%. Yes. But the, another important thing for people to understand is the relationship between interest rates and the stock market. And I drew a, a vertical black line on the, stock, on the two charts, the one on the left being interest rates, the one on the left, right being the stock market, which hit its peak in January of this year. And you can see they both moved almost at the same moment. Interest rates began to climb. The stock market rolled over, which is why the market went down so much on Friday. And by the way, we're going to have a really ugly day this morning on the stock market, at least at the open, enough to bring the, uh, the S&P index into bear market territory, which means a decline of 20 percent. And so this is all, yep. all not good. All right, Steve Radner, thank you very much. We appreciate your coming on this morning.